Hey gang, and welcome to the Golden Rage of TV Live. This time it's going to be a little different. I thought I would invite you to view a conversation that I had last night with the hosts of BK on the Air, Alan Sanders and Barry King, on the subject of the immense talent of Dawes Butler and Jim Cummings. So I'm here with you now live, and I'm going to stay with you for the entire stream. I will be in the chat. I'll be highlighting comments and doing all that fun stuff that uh, I don't usually get to do behind the scenes because I'm too busy trying to keep a show going. So this should be fun. It came off really well, I thought, and hopefully you will too. So with that, let's just get in it, shall we? Okay. Greetings, fellow classic TV fans, <laughs> and welcome to the Golden Rage of TV Live. I'm your host, Pat McCormack. Here, we like to celebrate color. Well, not just color. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to borrow a catchphrase here. Retro nostalgic geekiness. Based on classic television, of course. I borrowed that from my friends, uh, Alan Sanders and Barry King from BK on the Air, because that's their catchphrase. And I think that describes me pretty well, too. Minus the geekiness part. I don't really, I don't really understand those. Well, I'm a nerd. You're, an, you're a geek. Is that a good thing? I guess this in this day and age, it is a good thing. But for me, <laughs> I'm just retro nostalgic. <laughs> so anyway, welcome. And again, as I said, uh, I have my friends from BK on the Air that are going to be joining us in just a second, and I couldn't be more thrilled about that. These guys have been so supportive of me and my channel and everything that I do, <laughs> not only just by having me on their weekly radio show, but as true, honest to goodness, friends. It's so strange. I have so many neat friends that I've never actually met in person, and these two guys are two of them, and so I'm really thrilled about it. Um, tonight is a continuation, basically, of my last live stream, where I unearthed a couple of retro, uh, retro TV trivia episodes that were lurking around on a hard drive, and I was like, I forgot about these. What they're from is the VoiceOver Actors Hall of Fame induction ceremony, which I had the honor of co-hosting with my friend Derek Zemrak back in 2020. And for that, that broadcast live, by the way, alone, that was the only time they were ever played. And so they've never been seen on my channel. And today we're continuing. Last, last week, it was, as you might recall, it was June Foray and Mel Blanc. And you'd think, wow, that's about as big as you can get. But it's, it's arguable because tonight it's Dawes Butler and Jim Cummings, two names you may be familiar with or may not be, but it's guaranteed you are with the characters they have played. We're talking true voice talent. Speaking of voice talent, you know what? I think I'm just going to bring these guys on right now. I could see them holding their hands against their faces going, no, we're not the talent. Yes. Yes, you are. You are the talent. Guys, welcome. Hello. Barry King, Alan Sanders. What's up? Two of my favorite, favorite guys. So, <laughs> gentlemen. Yeah. Wait. Gentlemen. Who, who walked in? Someone in the room. Who's on the air? Yeah. Uh, okay. Please Maybe I should I should just refer to you as the as how did my friend uh how did my friend uh Dave Sundstrom put it? The Batman and Robin of Saturday morning talk radio. Wow. Did he say that? He did. And again, I thought that was pretty awesome. And I thought, there's a term I'm going to, I'm going to use that <laughs> because it's pretty true. You guys are, uh, you know, you're peanut butter and jelly. You go together really well. And um, <clears throat> again, well, when thanks. I said, I, when I said voice talent, maybe not camera talent, but voice talent. <laughs> 
<laughs> These guys are the best. They're There's the best. currently an earthquake in Cartersville, Georgia, right now. There's something going on. I, I see it. There's a whole <laughs> lot of shaking. The, star, <laughs> the ship has been hit. Go to the left. Go to the left. <laughs> so, guys, BK on the air. Let me let me start with that because you know you have fans. No, Alan, you don't have wow. ten fans. You have really? ten million fans. Uh, and oh, okay, <laughs> you know I know it's look. These radio, these radio shows are broadcast worldwide now, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, basically, if you got the right app, streaming, I guess, yeah, could be. You're going to pick it up. Well, and, and so you've gained fans with my followers, and with another man, Dave Sundstrom's followers, because of course, what happened? I turned him on to you guys, and he became a fan. Well, it's true. I mean, as soon as, as soon as we went on Dave's show and your show, my YouTube subscribers thing went up and I'm like, it's never gone up like that before. So something happened. So I'm very appreciative and glad of that. It has to do with the first segment, I think, or the, uh, <laughs> the first segment in my show that that guy's on. Yeah, you're right. It has my right, right like after that. the first break. <laughs> Well, <laughs> it's no secret to most of you that I have been honored to be a part of this show with these guys. Yeah, I just realized something. Now, Pat, you've you've been on my radio show. Alan's on the show. I've been on a podcast with Alan. Alan's been on with you, and you've been on Alan's podcast. But I don't think the three of us have been on a live YouTube stream. This is a first time. I'm very confused. And yeah, then I did my job. <laughs> <laughs> well let's face it you guys I, I call you the voice talent that you were wondering like why us when we're when you're talking well, about voice actors let's be clear not why us why me because right. i know bk is sort of like the imdb living embodiment of like this kind of world we don't even need to look things up we just go bk who was the guy the director the ad the assistant and then, uh, <laughs> uh, for me i can appreciate the characters and the well, when we get into it, when I, I did a little work, I did a little research, I did my homework, and uh, yeah, I was very familiar with the characters, even if I wasn't really sure who the guys were behind it. Right, right. And, you know, in, in researching it myself, I, I was looking at a lot of these actors, and, you know, it's like voice talent. You know, my wife was raised on radio. Her dad was a prominent uh, personality for many years. And so she got into the management and I started <laughs> understanding the inner workings of radio and how it works. And the one thing that always kind of confused me and not in a negative way, but maybe it's because I'd, I'd become a musician, that sort of talent, they would describe the DJs as the talent for the stations do they still do that mm -hmm. yeah a lot of times that's known as either on-air talent or host talent but it's definitely on-air talent well and and alan I, i've said so many great things about barry already i just he, i think we've we've pumped him up more than enough <laughs> what i gotta do i've got to just say in hearing your podcasts, hearing your shows, hearing the Wilder Ride uh, podcast again, we're gonna we're gonna put up some graphics for that. Matter of fact, let me do that really quick because this is this is Alan's podcast talking Ooh. about oh everything Gene Wilder and beyond, which I'm, I'm a big fan of, and he had me on a couple times, which was great. Mm -hmm. But it's like okay, get to the point. That the point being <laughs> was that in listening to you on air. I realized this guy's got talent. And, you know, it's, it's funny. Is, is, is it acquired talent? Is it something you go to school for? I know there's broadcasting school. I know there's all that. But in my father-in-law's case, in your guys' case, both you and Barry, when I hear you on the radio, what I hear is not just pros, but men with a talent, not and not necessarily a acquired talent, but God given, born with it. Well, I'm a big fan of uh, the, and without, I'm not going to turn it into anything political, but I mean, you cannot deny the talent of the uh, former Rush Limbaugh who passed away last year. And he used to say, talent on loan from God. And I used to think that was initially an arrogant thing to say. 
until I recognized what he meant is it's a gift and you can choose to squander it or use it, but it comes from God. And I am thankful every single day that I get an opportunity to do what I do. BK and I talk about it all the time. There are very few times in life you get to find the job you love so much that you actually hate taking time off. <laughs> if ever, right? <laughs> yeah. And I think he and I, uh, we, we were friends before. Uh, we were kind of on uh, cross paths with radio, but honestly, uh, I think BK, you could say the same thing. Uh, it's a, it's a gift, and we never take it for granted. Very right. true. Very well said. Well, what do you think, Barry? Is it a gift, or have you had to just work your butt off on it to get it right? <laughs> I do, I do think that, that's first, but it's a combination of things. Like uh, you know, you work and you work at it, and some training in um, Birmingham, Alabama out of high school at a, at a voice academy there, a, a performance academy that didn't really teach you. It taught you the technical ways of doing things and things you shouldn't do and things you should do, but it didn't tell you, it didn't teach you the talent. I mean, that's like, I say that's uh, Jackie Gleason said that too. He goes, well, you know, I can't even take, I can't even take uh, credit for my talent, you know, and I, God did it. You know, I can't even say anything about it. I didn't do anything about it, but Alan's right when it comes to that. And uh, we're both very thankful. And a little bit, a little bit of luck goes in with that too. So I, yeah. I think luck is, yeah. is a is factor it? as well. So all of that mixed together. Yes. I don't think you can discount that you've got to work. You have to have a little bit of talent. You definitely have to continue to hone it. You're always learning, but there's always that just little bit of luck. Sometimes you stumble across the person who just knows somebody who knows somebody. Uh, you just, and you never know. Uh, right. I, I remember a story. And I forgot the actor that was walking along with Jack Lemon. Uh, I think it was Neil. Um, uh, oh, the playwright Neil. Um, Neil Simon. Neil Simon. Yeah. Neil Simon and Jack Lemon were walking down some street in Broadway, and Jack Lemon, of course, he's a hot actor. He's like doing all this stuff, and he's like, bah, bah, bah. and Neil said to him, he "Goes, you know what? Do you realize in any one of these theaters, there's people just as good as you. They just didn't get your break yet." Yeah, I think about that all the time. Yeah. It's true. I've seen it. I've seen lightning strike right next to me multiple times in the music world. And it's definitely <laughs> being right there and missing that lightning strike can be quite painful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, but I was just, wait, come on, little luck. Well, and when, hey, Alan, I got lucky meeting yeah. you guys. So there's that. Mm -hmm. Alan mentioned that when we're when we're off and take a vacation when when we do this is the only job that I've ever had when I take a vacation I kind of go I don't want to really go on vacation I want to go but I don't but even <laughs> when I'm on vacation I tune into my radio station and listen and then I go back to the beach you know it's crazy just the dedication that's the that's it the dedication of the professionals but again you got you were kind of curious I, I don't know if both of you were but I know Alan you were like why me and I'm like <laughs> right, right. It, it's it's plain as day to me you are a voice talent. These people are a voice talent. Um, of course, they have a long terms for what they are. I mean, we couldn't even figure out the title of the of the uh, uh, the museum, which was started off as just the Voiceover Hall of Fame, and then it became well, maybe we need to call it the Voiceover Actors Hall of Fame. I didn't have anything to do with that, but it's that voiceover actor. And no, I think. I think the two guys you're talking about today, and I would say everybody that does, you know, voiceover, whether it's for uh, commercials, but even when you're doing a character, it you're acting, you're performing. It is a Absolutely. performance and you'll do takes and you'll have ad libs. And sometimes you'll strike gold with an ad lib. And sometimes the director's going to look at you and say, just read it as is. But um, it is performance. It really is an art form. And I think it's, it shouldn't be taken lightly just because sometimes they may be goofy cartoon characters you saw on Saturday mornings because we've evolved to the point where some of these voice talents that do movies like the uh, Pixar films that my girls make fun of me, they hit that emotional chord. Next thing you know, I get the leaky eyes going, oh, my God, they pulled it out of me. And and that's talent. Yeah, sure. What I'll, add, I'll add to that. What Alan said is maybe even more so with voiceover actors that do voices because you can't see them. They can only use their voice. They're they're matching it up with the action of whatever's being animated, the, the, the animation or the 3D Pixar right. or whatever. But they've got to convey all of that only through 
audio only through their voice. They got to act with their voices too. And, and especially if they're narrating some sort of book on record right. or on paper, something they've got nothing to use, but their voice to do that. And in some ways it may be a little harder than acting, it's, it's, but it's definitely different for sure. I think it is. Well, I mean, it's like I've done both, so I would know. Um, quite frankly, I don't know which is harder, but but just that term, uh, the the description of Mel Blanc last week, which was, and I, I didn't say this, but we we definitely quoted it, which was that he's the only person that could literally bring a cartoon character into 3D just by his voice. Oh yeah. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just oh, like blank. he brings them to life. And, you know, I, I feel that way about these two guys, too. I mean, there's definite different differences here, um, not just in age, but in style. So I thought what we'd do is we'd take a look at this long lost video and then we'll uh, come back and talk a bit about it. We'll start off with this man, mm. Mr. Dawes Butler, the great Dawes Butler. And how great is he? How great is he? Well, let's just have this guy tell you. The highly revered and respected Dawes Butler is immortalized by the many characters he voiced for Hanna-Barbera. But his successful career began much earlier as an impressionist on the stages of vaudeville. This specific talent would come in quite handy in his future. Butler's very first cartoon in 1948 was called Short Snorts on Sports. Then soon after, Tex Avery invited him to share his vocal talents in his MGM classic cartoon, Little Rural Riding Hood. Very sorry, cousin, but I'm afraid this city life is a bit too much for you. I shall motor you back to the country. In 1949, he had success teaming up with the great Stan Freeberg as Beanie Boy and Captain Huff and Puff on the Emmy Award winning children's show, Time for Beanie. The chemistry worked so well that Freebird offered Butler a chance to collaborate on his comedy albums. Proving this point, their 1953 Dragnet parody release, St. George and the Dragonette, went all the way to number one and became the first comedy record ever to sell a million copies. The legend you are about to hear is true. Only the needle should be changed to protect the record. Butler also worked with Freeberg on his radio show in the late 50s alongside his fellow inductee, June Foray. Around this time, Dawes and his close friend Don Messick joined forces with Joseph Hanna and William Barbera to be the initial voice talent for their new company. This spawned the Huckleberry Hound Show, which happened to be the very first cartoon to win an Emmy for outstanding achievement in children's programming. And who could forget Dawes' hilarious off-key rendition of Oh My Darling Clementine. Oh my darling, oh my darling, oh my darling Clementine. In 1960, he made a memorable and rare TV appearance as a contestant on You Bet Your Life. In it, Groucho pokes fun at Dawes about all the different cartoon characters he plays. And I also, uh, I'm a bear. I'm Yogi Bear. Oh. And I'm a cat. Uh, Mr. Jinx is the name, and uh, I like to chase those miserable misses, you know? <laughs> He's a one-man zoo here. <laughs> it's no secret that a good portion of the characters he voiced were indeed impersonations of established comedic stars. For example, as Yogi Bear, he channeled Art Carney. Now you see why I'm smarter than the average Fred Flintstone boo. <laughs> His hokey wolf was Phil Silvers. Where? Why, uh, hey, let me see, where? Uh, uh, over there. Snagglepuss was modeled after Bert Lahr. Poultry piddlin' pittens, a pistol practice even. And Wally Gator was clearly Ed Wynn. What's with this health kick? My muscles are still sleeping. But Dawes could always be original if needed, as proved with the voices of Quick Draw McGraw. I'll do the thinning around here, Baba Boy. Elroy Jetson. Bye, Mom. See you in orbit. Captain Crunch and many others. But Lafort, nothing's crunchier than Captain Crunch cereal. In the mid-1970s, Dawes began an actor's workshop, which helped to shape future voice acting stars such as Nancy Cartwright, Corey Burton, Bill Farmer, Robert Bergen, and Mona Marshall, just to name a few. Reportedly, in the years since his passing, it's taken up to seven different actors to continue the voices of some of the characters that the singular great Dawes Butler brought to life. 
Boy, that's wow. saying something, huh? This is mm -hmm. wild. So seven <laughs> actors just to touch, the, just to brush the surface of what he had created. And yet, you know, it's, it's great watching this because it kind of gives me a quick refresher course, too. <laughs> it's just like, I, I know a lot about Dawes, but oh, yeah, most of his voices were impersonations. Pretty close, yeah. I mean, even, even his, um, even the um, Yogi Bear, when you look at Yogi Bear, he's got the hat on like Norton wears in the Honeymooners. It's the same hat. So I don't know if that was, I guess that was, could have been on purpose, but yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I hear all of that now. Yeah. It, it's funny. It's, it was obvious. It was blatant. Some would say safe. I don't know. My understanding, my understanding, if I get this right, and you guys can check me on this, but Bert Lahr was not happy about Snagglepuss. Oh, he wasn't? Really? No. And you know who that is, right, Alan? Bert Lahr. Well, why that. would he be so upset about that? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he should just have exited. Stays left, even. I didn't know you were going to hit me. <laughs> Already lying. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I Bert mean, there, there may have been a connotation <laughs> with Snagglepuss, but you know what? He was such a great character. I loved him. I grew up when I was little uh, watching the Saturday morning cartoons, the whole uh, laugh Olympics with all of the Hanna-Barbera characters running in a, in a right. weekly competition. I loved watching them all. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And he was and, probably a good portion of them. And I would, I would also say that uh, if you listen to captain crunch, now, we <laughs> talked earlier about how Dawes is doing in, thinly veiled, maybe imitations of somebody else as some of these characters. In Captain Crunch's voice, when I hear those commercials that Dawes did, someone else replaced him later. But I hear, I wonder if he was channeling Jim Backus. Because I hear Magoo, <laughs> I hear Mr. Howell, I hear I hear Jim Backus's voice, too, when I hear Captain Crunch. But I have no idea if that's was it, who influenced him. Oh, that. man. I'll bet you're right. It's the only um, way to fly, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah, love it. <laughs> Get back there and make me an old-fashioned. <laughs> Alan's got an old fashioned right now. I think he's drinking. No, 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 no. I'm no, afraid to screw it up. You can't screw up an old fashioned. <laughs> oh, man. That's right. Love that movie. <laughs> well, the thing that I found pretty interesting that I came to discover was a mutual friend of mine and Dawes. Gosh, I can actually say that. That's pretty crazy. Kathy Garber who Barry, you know, I'm, I'm good friends with, and she's been very supportive from of Family me Affair, too. yeah. Sissy, yeah, from Family Affair. She is a pretty established voice artist herself. She narrates a lot of different things. Uh, books books has been a biggie for her, um, but but she can, she can adapt characters with her voice and literally be different characters. Alan, I could totally see you doing that. But, I mean, you know, books on on tape, it's and I know you've had acne experience too. So there's another reason why I have you here, Alan, just so you know. But <laughs> well, I was gonna say, I uh, I recently did a uh, he's written a sixth book, but I had a, a friend of mine from high school reach out and say, I need somebody to bring my it's like cartoon characters, but in an adult world, it's uh kind of like a world where animals and humans exist together and they solve crimes, and it's about a pig and a sheep, sort of like sherlock holmes and dr watson and they go on these different adventures and i have voiced five of his short stories so far which has been fun because i created the sounds of the characters and i would have to send him tests i'm like okay here's what i think the wolf in this story sounds like or here's what like the police chief who's a wolf or the bear who runs the bar or the gaggle of geese and it really is a lot of fun to read someone's work but have to put character spin on it and then create like my own version of what I think the characters are. And they've kind of been locked in stone. And now he's written, you know, to me, his emails and saying, I now, every time I write a new story, I hear the voice you've created. And that, that's amazing. I, that, that's so much fun. Barry, he's still wondering why I invited him. I no, think. no, why not? No, I'm glad you invited him. On. But I'm wondering why he's wondering why no, I invited him. I don't well, know why he would wonder. Like, <laughs> yeah. here's the thing: I watched um, some videos on the characters of of Jim Cummings, and then I did, you know, uh, you know, 
our other uh, our other character here and, and our actor. And I was just, I see Elroy, I see right. Snagglepuss, I see all the characters, and I don't realize it's the same guy. It's like, how is one person able to make such a distinction that it's one person? And I'm still blown away by that. Yeah, yeah. facial expressions, all part of it, right? Going to oh, act it yeah. up, you know, and, and how much fun could it be, could it have been doing these full-on shows as a voice actor with fellow actors mm -hmm. in the room with you? I mean, that's, uh, but I mean, let's, let's face it. He had mainstay characters. Here's a great one, of course, <laughs> him and, and Yogi. He's smarter than the average bear, I think. But, you know, and again, <laughs> those two were golden for him. Mm -hmm. But um, the thing that I remember about Kathy and what Kathy had to say was that he just decided to get into teaching. It wasn't so that he was he wasn't the guy that was like, I'm not working. I can't do anything. He was, it was just like work tapered off. He got a little older and he decided to open a voiceover academy. Right. And, he did. And she went to it and That's studied awesome. under him and just, oh man, you, she would, she was beaming at how wonderful of a man Dawes Butler was. And, you know, you hear his voice, you, you don't doubt it. It's uh, just, this along, is... Along with a lot of other people, too. Uh, Bob Bergen studied under him, went to his school. Nancy Cartwright from The Simpsons went to Dawes Butler's training school, his training place, which I think was at his home. Yes. That's where he read it. Linda Gary was another great voiceover uh, uh, artist that I love. From uh, She did a lot of voices on He-Man. She did a lot of voices on... Uh, uh, She-Ra, Princess of Power from Filmation. She worked on Black Star and a lot of other stuff. And Linda Gary uh, worked with him too. He, that says a lot if you go and have Dawes Butler. Oh, who do you, who trained you? A Dawes Butler? Oh, wow. Okay, well, that's impressive. So, yeah. <laughs> You're in. You're in. Do, do you think they asked her who trained her, Tara Strong? No. Nah, you're in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. You're in. <laughs> she's She's just a huge voice actor right now but she's well, the whole package too um did let, tara do uh harley quinn i don't know that I would think, make sense i thought that, she did harley quinn and batman I think that would make sense yeah, yeah. but I'm i'll go sure. with that you know you mentioned mel mel blank last week mel blank is i guess you a lot of would consider him the king right you know the king of, of voices the man of a billion voices is what i'd call him but uh some call some did call Dawes Butler the Mel Blank of television, mm. and that's a that's a big shot in the arm compliment uh, on, from somebody who does voiceovers. And Mel Blank is the only one. I don't know if Dawes ever did it, but Mel Blank was able to do a, a cartoon short with Bugs and Daffy in it, and they were talking to each <laughs> other. And then at the, the same, same cartoon. Yeah. He had Daffy do Bugs' voice like Daffy would and had Bugs do his voice. like it, it, It's insane how he was able to do it, but he pulled it off, and that's that's some talent to do that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, I was wondering, listening to him, where does all that spit go? Where does the spit <laughs> fly? When he does Sylvester, it's just got to be – it's got to be a torrent of – so fun, you know. <laughs> Replace the microphone; it's rusted. <laughs> you just call him, call him Mel the Raspberry. Yeah. <laughs> so what's happening? You know that kind of those there, little things there. that you wish yeah, you were what? a fly on the wall for. God, if I could actually see him performing Pepe Le Pew, I'd be like, okay, <laughs> I'm good. I love the I'm photo. Good. I love I love the photo you put up of Dawes. Like he was in the studio and you know, when they're there, they start acting out when they're doing the voices. That's true. That helps. And Alan will, Alan will tell you too, is when we're, when you record commercials, even just as simple as simple as recording a commercial, if you, if you need to make a happy, uh, make the commercial happy or whatever, you will smile as you're talking about the commercial and all that comes through and goes out over the air like that. Speaking of me, see, that was the thing you guys like to joke about. Well, you know, it always sounds like he's smiling. Well, you are. <laughs> Actually, my go-to face is now. my go-to face is this, Alan. <laughs> I'm not buying it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true though. You hear it, and and it, that was the thing when I started doing spots for you, which was part of what helped me develop my persona, if I have one. Was greetings, fellow classic TV fans. 
Mm-hmm. You want to hear it. And you want to be up and you want to sound up and you want to sound like you're smiling all the time. Even if even if the hosts of the show make fun of you about no. it constantly. No, <laughs> so, right. no. We, we okay. I have never gotten a message from you where I can't imagine you just grinning ear to ear. I can just <laughs> feel it. But what BK said is absolutely true. And it's part of, it's it's like 101 voice acting. You act out the part of whatever the emotion is for this for whatever you're recording. If you're doing something serious or studious or something that's supposed to be, you know, a little bit more, um, you know, gravitas, you know, you have more of a, a you, you straighten your shoulders and you may have more of a furrowed brow. And if you're doing a light, fun commercial, you know, you open your eyes and you're just like, but you got to do it because it makes your voice convey the attitude. I'm I'm telling you, I'd give Candy Apple Collisions my business instantly if I was out there. Because, you know, <laughs> have you been in an accident lately? Candy Apple Collisions is your, yeah, well, it's again. <laughs> I can't believe Candy Apple Custom Collisions have made it onto this podcast. That's hilariously funny. Let them know the, I'll be sending the bill out next week. <laughs> do that. Yeah, you do that. Just uh, the WBHF can, uh, can send it to me. By the way, I, I wanted to throw this logo up. Because oh, oh wow this is where the boys that. are at and you can tune into them and uh, this is a great one too i like this because it has oh. both of your both of you and your things where, where uh, alan it's the wilder ride and i know you have that segment of the the offshoot which is listener lounge listeners lounge see i could be a voice actor not really <laughs> but <laughs> so you know again we're, we're like free peas in a pod, in my opinion. You know, we, yeah. So never think you're going to be the missing link, Alan. You are indeed <laughs> the thing that ties this whole room together. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm the glue. Okay, good. I'm the. Okay. It really, it really <laughs> tied the room together, dude. <laughs> Did it not? <laughs> well, okay. So let's move on to our next cat, which is Jim, because. Oh man, what a body of work. I mean, here's the here's a great shot because it just gives you a really really small taste of the work that he's done and continues to do. Um but if you're not familiar with him at all, let's uh let's get familiar. Okay? You know the wonderful thing about Tiggers is Tiggers are wonderful things, as is the immense talent of the legendary voice actor Jim Cummings. If you shot an arrow into the air, the chances are it would come down on a character that Jim's played. He began his career in the late 80s on the Disney Channel production Dumbo's Circus. There is no town, but there are lots of people. See, the folks who live around here are farmers. This began what would become a long and prestigious Disney relationship. Replacing the great Hal Smith, Cummings soon became the permanent voice of Winnie the Pooh. Oh, (laughs) you scared me. By the year 2000, with the release of the Tigger movie, Jim had also replaced Paul Winchell as the new voice of Tigger. This now meant that he was pulling double duty for Disney. Brown, brown, my family tree, look like them and they look like me. Brown, brown, my family tree, we're a happy family. But the Pooh and Tigger characters barely scratch the surface. In fact, Cummings has taken on hundreds of roles and still counting. Warner Brothers, Pixar, DreamWorks, Nickelodeon, and more have all capitalized on Jim's incredibly diverse voice acting skills. In 1991, he made his mark with the Looney Tunes gang by voicing the Tasmanian Devil. Also around this time, Cummings took on yet another Disney role, playing one of his personal favorites, Darkwing Duck. I am the terror that flaps in the night. I am the pebble and the penny loafer of depravity. I am Darkwing Duck. Uh, so you've heard of me. Let's get dangerous. He took home the Annie Award for this performance. Another of his favorites, and mine too, was playing Ray the Cajun Firefly in the 2009 film The Princess and the Frog. Look how she lights up the sky. My bell Evangeline. He's also earned Emmy nods for his outstanding performance in Star Wars The Clone Wars. <laughs> well, as long as you're not paying me in credits. I'm sure I could accommodate your wishes, Master Jedi. And my friends, Tigger and Pooh. 
In 2018, Jim reprised these two roles on the big screen. His performance in Christopher Robin was hailed by the chief critic of Vanity Fair, who called his Winnie the Pooh Oscar-worthy. What to do indeed? Pooh? Christopher Robin. If you simply name a blockbuster animated film, it's most likely he had a part in it. Cummings has also lent his voice to many popular video game franchises, such as Kingdom Hearts, The Elder Scrolls, Fallout, The World of Warcraft, and more. So chances are, if it's a popular animated feature for the big screen, the small screen, video games, or any other sort of multimedia you can think of, it's a safe bet that the name of the great Jim Cummings will appear in the credits. Mm. And, you know, there was an aspect that as I mentioned right there that Dawes, unfortunately, wasn't able to take part in, part in, at least as best of my knowledge, and that was video games. And all of that, and Jim Cummings can sing, too. I mean, just he can sing as well. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, again, they're, they're musical people. But can I add? I, can I add to your list, Pat? Because he please he do, also, please do. He, he was involved, in, and it wasn't mentioned on there. He was involved in some shows that that skirt the 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 genre that I love. He he was um, he played two or three characters in Batman the animated series on Batman. I mean, it, the list goes on of what he's done. Uh, TBS Cartoon Network produced a, a cartoon from ninety three to ninety five called SWAT Cats: The Radical Squadron. It was like a couple of it was cat. Everyone in the city were cats, and but they flew these fighter jets and fight, fought crime. And he played Mayor Mannix in SWAT Cat. He also voiced Modoc in the Iron Man cartoon from yeah. Marvel in nineteen ninety four to ninety six. Uh, Spider Man from uh, ninety five to ninety eight. He was the Shocker, the Chameleon. He did the voice for the Man Spider and Craven the Hunter. I'm sorry. No, not Craven. He did Blade, the Vampire Hunter's voice on right. Spider-Man. So there's some Marvel work that he did right there. He also delved into <laughs> Superman, the animated series. He played, he, he, he did the voice of Duncan the Horse in The Simpsons in the episode Saddle Sore Galactica. In their episode, <laughs> which was perfect. That's a funny title as it is. Uh, but yeah, I can't believe all the Star Wars stuff he's done. He did uh, audio books, fictional podcast characters, podcasts where they're fictional characters and stories, uh, theme park rides, and you mentioned video games. And I went all those years to Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida, and did not know that it was his voice. He's the guy that opened up the Terminator 2 ride. It was his voice yep. in the Terminator 2, um, the Battle Across Time ride in, uh, in Universal. And I didn't know that till I, till I looked it up. So it's amazing. Well, it is. Alan, do you have any, uh, any recollections of... Not knowing who it was, but having this sudden discovery. I didn't know. Well, obviously, uh, Winnie the Pooh was a character I knew forever, as even as a kid, and the transition to Jim Cummings, and then when he took over Tigger. And I don't know if you know the story, um, but I discovered it uh, of late, trying to get ready for this show. And when Paul Winchell had his stroke right, and realized, you know, because they were already working together. Like, he was... Uh, Jim was sort of the, That's the right. bench. He was like, hey, uh, while Paul's on vacation or while Paul's doing something and I'm going to be out for a couple of weeks, can you fill in for me? And so that's where he kind of learned Tigger. But when Paul had his stroke and it, 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 it hit me when Paul goes, take care of my little buddy, would you? Oh. I mean, that just shows you these wow. guys gravitate toward the characters that they have brought to life. And the idea that take care of my little buddy, not just play them well or do a good job or have fun. It's like, take care of my little buddy. Yeah. I mean, just it, it, It's hard not to feel just a little sting in your eye knowing Paul was like, I'm not going to be able to ever play this character again, but I'm going to trust you to do it. Yeah. Pick the right guy, I think. Don't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's great. You know what? I, I, I browsed YouTube for just a little bit. The number of conventions where Jim just wants to talk to the people, talk to the fans. And, and he's so humbled by when people say your song carried me through a dark time or your character or your voice or your persona stayed with me. And, and he's like, you just think you're playing a cartoon character. And here's these, here are people coming out to these conventions saying you yep. carried me through a dark time. You helped me get by. And he's like, it's, it's powerful. And you make, right. makes you realize how important it is what you're doing. Right. 
Well, and and to your point, Alan, during the ceremony, when it was his turn finally to, to accept his award, he was emotional. Not just, well, he was emotional because it, so many so many other great talents came on and talked about how great he was and it was he was almost he was almost balling by the time we, we gave him an opportunity to talk about it then of course <laughs> audio problems but you know <laughs> it's like it was live what are you gonna do um, but it, it, you could see how touched it was and and speaking of the conventions thing um we were at the silicon valley comic-con here oh i want to say this was probably five years ago and there was full it was full of talent people that i really wanted to see and you guys would have, would agree with me on who i wanted to see but you know in the autograph section my son my 23 year old son well who would have been 20 at that time came over and said or or, or less dad it's jim cummings and he's by himself <laughs> Let's go talk to him. And I'm like, who? <laughs> oh, poo? <laughs> and of course, I, I wasn't educated at that point about him because, again, he, he does all this work, this huge body. But, mm -hmm. you know, their characters are the characters. You don't have a face attached to it. You don't you can't just make the connection. Mm -hmm. But amazing. then when I saw his body of work, I was like, that line I used in the beginning, you shoot an arrow in the air, it's likely to come down on a character Jim has played. <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. Alan, Alan just recently watched, he'll tell you, he just recently watched Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. And he's been trying to get me to watch it, and I haven't watched it yet, but I promise I'm going to watch it. But, Alan, did you check it out? How yes. many voices Jim Cummings did in, in, in Chip and Dale, the new movie? By the way, a huge plug. Go watch it right now. Disney Plus, I thought – Ah, it's a kid's movie. My kids used to like to watch the Rescue Rangers. But then I heard someone say, if you like Roger Rabbit and all of the Easter eggs that are embedded in Roger Rabbit, yeah. this is like the modern version of that, where you've got cartoons, not just 2D, but 3D interacting in the human world. And just it's phenomenal. And yes, to have Jim Cummings involved in the background, doing some of those characters, bringing those Rescue Rangers that he did voice over for back to life. It's it's not it's amazing. It oh, really yeah. is. And you Pete, fat cat, bootleg poo, bootleg tigger, shredder's arm and dark and dark wing duck in the film. He voiced all those in it. Right. Shredder. That's right. Amazing stuff. Um, if you haven't seen the the Re the Chippendale movie Rescue Rangers, d do yourself a favor. It's it's so much fun. It's light. It moves along. It's a little goofy. But my daughter, uh, who I said, who loves Roger Rabbit, my oldest daughter. And I said, well, you got to check this out. She said, it's like the, um, oh, what was the movie with uh, Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan, The Rush Hour? She goes, oh, it's oh like I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, it's, like, right. it's like Rush Hour, Rush but hour. in That's Chippendale right. world, where it's just, they're solving a crime, but they're, it's moving, it's comedy, it's action, but it never stops, and it's just so much fun. Got to check it out. Well, it reminds me of a little trivia question for you, and I'll give it give it to you, Alan. Do you know why they're called Chip and Dale? <laughs> no. no, I'm hoping it's not, that. not because of the dancers. I was going to say, let me just show you. <laughs> Look, when BK flashes his audience every week, I get nervous that it's going to yeah one flash the audience more. exactly. Um, Chip has the one tooth. Oh, Dale man. has the two. Oh. And, and even more trivia was when I was on General yeah. Hospital, they had two cameras. And the way the director would say which camera to, to concentrate on, one had its name Chip and the other one was Dale. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So okay. The cameras oh, probably still it. the case, Chip and Dale, the two cameras wow. shot at now the General it. Hospital. Hey, it's ABC. You know, they, they got the everything way, isn't, there, isn't, there a, isn't there a photo of Chip and Dale, one with the Magnum PI shirt on and India and the other one has Indiana Jones uh outfit on and they're like, hey, that's funny because uh Tom Selleck was one once wanted to play uh, Indiana Jones and didn't get to play him or something like that. And that right. No, I think that's the end. inside joke behind that because that's what they wore in the Rescue Rangers. One right. was more right. like Raider, Raiders and one was like Magnum PI. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, by the <sighs> way, you know how we opened, you talked about how last week you, you did a thing on Mel Blanc. One of the things I did run across with Jim Cumming in one of his Comic-Con or Sci-Fi Con or one of the cons recently when things started opening back up, he told the story. Someone asked, goes, so what 
what got you to want to do this? Like, how did you get here? And he said, when I was five, <clears throat> there was a show on TV and he goes, and I'm old. So it was an old show called the Jack Benny show. And Mel Blanc was a guest and he was doing his voices. And he said, I asked my dad, he said, now, and now I don't know if it's true, but it's Jim Cumming told the story. So I'm just recounting it. He said to his dad, he goes, who's that? He goes, well, he's the guy that does Bugs Bunny. He's the guy that does Daffy Duck. He's, he's like, you can do that? And he said, <laughs> kind of in the back of my mind, I always thought you can make a living doing voices. And it took him a while before it ever came around. But he said at age five, it struck him that that's a guy who does all the cartoon characters he watches on Saturday morning. Right. Wow. Yeah. So true. So, well, speaking of Saturday mornings, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of wrap this up now, guys, but I wanted to, uh, I wanted to give you, let you guys give a shout out to the show. So I'll give the mic to you on that one, Barry. And then Alan, you can tell us a little about what's coming up for you. Okay. Oh, well, well th thanks for having us on. Thanks for having me on tonight. It's always fun to get together with you and do live <laughs> video youtube streams or podcasts or what do we have whatever we happen to do it's always awesome and fun you can hear me saturdays 10 a.m till noon it's bk on the air that's me uh 10 a.m till noons every saturday eastern um wbhf radio wbhfradio.org you can stream it from our website or you can download the free tune in app and sound uh radio garden I almost said sound garden that's a rock group i almost messed up <laughs> uh there may be one of those two uh the radio garden app or the uh tune in app and listen free on those apps if you want it's just we talk about retro geeky stuff from just uh from the past uh from the 50s maybe all the way up to the present marvel movies comic books old television series uh, schoolhouse rock everything that you remember that was fun about saturdays and growing up I was born in the 60s, grew up in the 70s, and graduated high school in the early 80s. That's my generation. And uh, Alan there, that guy right there is with me every Saturday. We, we both play off each other and have a great time. And the guy up there above me right now, he's got a segment on there, too. So you can actually hear all three of us Saturday, every Saturday on BK on the Air. Yeah. What an honor it is. It is. Love you guys. Well, So, Alan, what's happening with the Wilder Ride? So we were on a... A little more of a extended hiatus than expected. My co-host, Walt Murray, who fills in for me at WBHF whenever I can't be there for my show, um, he uh, he got remarried. And, oh, uh, that's right. Walt's and, and great. He decided it's fun being in the honeymoon suite and, and kept putting the quarters in the, uh, the magic <laughs> fingers bed and didn't want to come out. But oh, Walt. He, <laughs> so a three-month hiatus turned into six, but we did mm. uh, record a brand new episode for season five. And uh, it's going to be a little bit of a different format. We both have a lot of things on our plate. Uh, but let me just say, you can go back to season one. We started off breaking down a uh, Gene Wilder movie one minute at a time. We broke down the movie Young Frankenstein. BK was a guest on several of the episodes where we just looked at the movie Young Frankenstein. And we looked at one minute of the movie at a time. So each episode is one minute of the movie. Now, not a one minute episode. <laughs> Sometimes 30, 40 minutes talking about that one minute. Uh, we followed it up with Blazing Saddles, and then the world decided to come down with the flu, and so we had to reinvent ourselves, and we turned it into more of a, what we call our listener's lounge in season three. We turned it into a weekly talk show. Where we brought on what we thought would be an interesting guest, had some fun. We had some other segments and bits, and then uh, season four, we did the same thing, and we are just now launching season five. So you can check all those episodes out by visiting thewilderide.com or on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Do a search for The Wilder Ride social media and every podcatcher out there, The Wilder Ride. Awesome. Awesome. I highly recommend it. I highly recommend BK on the air. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me tonight. This was a blast. Total thank blast. You. Well, thank you. We'll have to do this again. But for now, bye, everybody. Yep, that was a lot of fun. Those guys are a lot of fun. And I want to thank you all for being here and joining us for that pre-recorded uh, live stream with Alan Sanders, Barry King from BK on the Air, talking about the great Dawes Butler and Jim Cummings. We've got more to come. Not tonight, but... I have a pretty special announcement to make. I'm not going to make it yet because it isn't confirmed, but 
there's there's talk that there's a pretty special guest coming to join me here in the next couple of weeks. So I'll give you more details as I as I become aware. But in the meantime, I'm going to thank you all one more time for joining me on the Golden Rage TV Live. And I'll see you all next week. Okay. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.